Folks, this is a very important time for me, an important opportunity for me that I've been looking forward to for some time. There are so many people that I'd like to take just a few minutes to thank for an extraordinary experience serving as the governor of this great state. I should obviously start with the person who's responsible for a lot of my political success, a person who has taught me a lot about life, a person who has raised our two children, a person who has traveled to over 500 libraries, a person who has been an advocate for literacy and early childhood learning, a person who cares deeply about main streets in small town Iowa, a person who has been the love of my life, and our great first lady, my wife, Christy Vilsack. I have been fortunate during this time of governing to have an extraordinary partner in government. Those of you who have not had the opportunity to work every day with Sally Peterson the way I have, you've not seen her tireless effort, her concern, her compassion, her commitment to those with mental illness and with disabilities, her desire to make sure that Iowa was a tolerant and fair and just place, her advocacy for those who are most troubled and most oppressed in society today. She has been and continues to be the conscience of this administration, and she has done an extraordinary job as the chair of our party. She has been acknowledged tonight, but please join with me in thanking her for eight tremendous years on behalf of all of Iowa. A governor has many partners, and I can tell you that I've been privileged to serve with Democratic legislators. While I can't name all of them tonight, I do want to acknowledge our leaders, Mike Ronstall and Pat Murphy. They have been with us, and they have supported us. And my fervent hope is that we can give to these two individuals the opportunity to lead the legislature as Majority Leader, Speaker, a Majority Leader of the Senate and Speaker of the House. The first time in 40 years we have the opportunity to win it all, folks. Please make sure that we actually deliver a House and a Senate for our state, for a Democratic House and a Democratic Senate. There are other partners, and that's the statewide elected officials. You don't know what I know, which is that we are extraordinarily blessed to have the best attorney general in the entire United States of America and the best treasurer in the entire United States of America. And we need to reelect Mike Fitzgerald and Tom Miller. I'll have something to say about the other two statewide elected officials we have in just a few moments, Mr. Secretary, if you don't mind. But we also have a tremendous opportunity to elect two great folks. I have campaigned with Mike Morrow and Denise O'Brien, and I can tell you, you can be proud of both of these candidates. They are working hard. They are going to continue great traditions in both the Secretary of State's office and the Secretary of Agriculture. We need to have a clean sweep on Election Day. A clean sweep. And the final partner I've had that I want to acknowledge in politics is our congressional delegation. It's small but mighty. 
Tom Harkin has been just an unbelievable friend to me. He has been an unbelievable supporter of our policies. He has worked with us in the Senate. Uh, perhaps the greatest opportunity was working with him on our farm bill. And I will tell you, Senator, I look forward to calling you Mr. Chairman again after this election, and we can work on a new farm bill, a fair and more just farm bill. And I served with Leonard Boswell in the Senate, and I've also served with Jeff Lamberti. And let me tell you, there is no comparison. There is no comparison. We need Leonard Boswell back in Congress representing and being the dean of our congressional delegation, and he needs support. He needs Dave Lobsack. He needs Joyce Schulte. He needs Dr. Spencer, and he needs Bruce Braley to join him. A clean sweep, folks. That's what we have a chance to do, a first time in 40 years. A clean sweep for Democrats. Now, Mr. President, I appreciate the fact that you're here tonight, and I want to thank you uh, for the leadership that you gave this country and for the advice you gave me. As a guy who was elected after coming from way behind, nobody expected us to win. I came to the White House, and you gave me advice, and I took it. And I became the only Democratic governor elected in 1998 or 1999 that's still governing because of your advice. And, Mr. President, you have made a difference to over 98,000 children in this state because they have health insurance because of your leadership. You've made a difference to the children who are going to school in this state. You made a difference to workers. You made a difference to seniors. We are a better state because of your leadership, sir, and I want to thank you for your leadership and for you being here today. I've been following the governor's race. I know you might find that surprising. And I will tell you, Mr. Secretary, I find this a very curious race. I can't quite figure out the Republican strategy. I've been thinking about it. I watched your debate performance uh, a couple of nights ago, and I want to thank you for sticking up for me and defending me. You did a better job than I could have done. But I'm thinking about this, and I'm thinking, well, why would Jim Nussel do this? Why would he go after me? Why wouldn't he talk about the issues? I started thinking about this. Could he talk about the economy in this state? Pretty tough to do when there are a record number of employed people. Pretty tough to do when incomes are up for average families. Could he talk about health care? Pretty tough to do when we're second in the nation in health care coverage, when we're only one of three states that reduced health care coverage. Could he talk about education? Again, tough to do. We're raising teaching salaries. We're second in the nation in SAT scores, third in ACT scores, in the top five graduation rates. Pretty tough to talk about education. Could he talk about energy? Well, that's tough to do. We're number one in ethanol, number one in soy diesel, number one in per capita wind production. Pretty tough to do. Could he talk about maybe expanding culture and recreation and bringing young people back to the state? Well, Vision Iowa, CAT, 250 projects. We rank third in the nation in the number of young people with college degrees in our workforce and the growth in that number. He has no issues to talk about, so he decided he was going to attack me personally and he was going to attack our administration. Well, I'll tell you, my mother gave me very good advice when I was growing up. She said people who live in glass houses should never throw stones, should never throw stones. So I will tell you, Mr. Nussel, if you want to talk about accountability and you want to talk about making sure government does its job right, then please don't lecture to me. Please don't lecture to these Democrats. Please don't lecture to the people of Iowa. When you live in a house with Jack Aberhoff, when you live in a house with Duke Cunningham, when you live in a house with Bob Nay, when you live in a house with Tom DeLay, don't you be talking to us. Don't you be throwing stones at my house. You take care of your house.